This is Toby. And this is Sean, and we're back. Yeah. With some more rock reviews. It's been a couple weeks, so we're uh, playing a little catch up here. Um, we weren't able to get together last week, but uh, let me see. You played a show. You, did you put, no, I played yeah. a show John with John Motard. Motard. And uh, then uh, we got a show coming up we're going to talk about. It's uh, uh, it, M March 18th at the parlor. It's a Friday, and both of us are playing. Sean's playing with Party Organ, and I'll be playing with Yard Work. They're on at 4. We're on at 7, I think. And that show's also got Ferns from Oregon. Uh oh, Romeo and Obnosticon. So um, that'll be fun. That's part of the whole South by Southwest thing. We've got, we live in Austin, so we've got uh, South by Southwest coming up during spring break here. Do you know we're, anything about Obnosticon? I've never heard of them. Yes, Obnosticon, yes. Uh, Mark Rogers and Stan's band, Obnosticon. Uh, they're having, uh, they're in flux. They will be playing as a three piece. Uh, if um i don't want to get into their band gossip because maybe they'll be back with their singer at our show but uh, hopefully but uh they uh carolyn anyway don't want to talk about that here well thanks for building it up because <laughs> now i know their history and i'm gonna be disappointed seeing them for the first well, time well they were a three-piece and they've had a singer mm -hmm. and they probably be playing as a three-piece again oh cool and they're great. They're very uh, progressive, heavy music. Mark, uh, I just saw him the other day when John Motard played at the uh, um, uh, Valhalla, and uh, he played drums for uh, uh, One Good Long. Mark can play any instrument pretty much, but his his guitar playing. We got to play gu uh, guitar and bass together a lot, both working at the Blind School, backing up kids at the talent show and stuff like that we played Ra awesome. rainbow in the dark together a lot and uh run to the hills uh, you know anyway uh uh great player those guys are great they've been playing together for like 15 years and uh yeah i mean geez stan had a band with jim from uh oh romeo it's really incestuous and then paul and i of course played together for years so yeah it's just uh one of those, uh, yes, an incestuous scene show, except for Ferns, who've never played out of Oregon, I believe, before. They're a stoner rock band. Fuck yeah. And God, I, I can't wait. This is going to be fun. Yeah, they're playing first at 3 o'clock. And so, yeah, the good guys, they sound good. I haven't met them yet. They've never been to town, but uh, part of, you know, all these people coming to town. Oh, and then I'm playing the Chili Dog Fest twice on... Uh, uh, Sunday during South by Southwest at noon with yard work and at 3.30 again uh, with uh, with John Motard. Where it, at? Oh, Chili That's Fest. at the I'm sidebar. Sorry. That part's at the sidebar. Oh, cool. And there's a lot of good acts. And I know two two bands after the John Motard set, there's a band with Mike Watt in it. What? Yeah. Wow. Uh -huh. That's awesome. Yeah. So that's really exciting for me. Is that a Sunday? The that's 12th? on Sunday. So okay. if this shows the 18th, that's Sunday, March 20th. 20th. Oh, uh -huh. okay. The weekend after. Okay. Gotcha. Oh, yeah, oh, not this weekend. The weekend the after. The same next weekend next that we're year. playing. Okay, Second cool. weekend is our spring break. Uh, if that means anything to anyone watching. Um, but yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. There's a lot of good stuff. Some of the stuff we're going to be talking about, uh, those bands will be playing around town during the festival. Maybe not part of the festival, but eat around the festival. Um, so is there anything you want to talk about before we jump into the new releases, Sean? No. Yeah. I'm kind of ready to go. Okay. Uh, yeah. Awesome. Okay. Big rock release. We're talking about the 19th album from the Scorpions. Yes. Rock, rock believer. She's a rock believer. We are Scorpions. We're going to make you a believer in rock music. Right, guys? Uh-huh. Yes. From Hanover, Germany. Yeah. Uh, this record is really um, just cemented my faith in <laughs> Scorpions' ability to craft timeless rock ballads um <laughs> but i think they really you know i know a common theme with our youtube shows talking about consistency and also hitting that pinnacle of writing music to where it's a it's so formulaic it's just almost perfect like the band has found it but this 
I think does a fucking great job of showing that scorpions still have it. They still fucking got it, man. I don't know. What do you think, Toby? Let me show you the last Scorpions album I listened to before this one. Blackout! <laughs> Blackout is a flying record. <laughs> but uh, it's been a while. You know, for me, like, when I hear a song like Winds of Change, I'm like, you know, S so long, old pal. It's been good. <laughs> but, like, the thing is, okay, there's a rule, and I'm going to say it's the Scorpions rule, and I've called it that before. And that's if, like, I'll cut the Scorpions some slack, because if you've put out six classic albums and you can't afford to, like, have a house with a car and a family and all that shit, then uh, you have earned the right to do whatever the fuck you need to do to make that money, as far as I'm concerned. You know, like, the Scorpions made their contribution to rock and roll a long time ago, you know, and uh, all those albums with Uli John Roth, my favorite is going to be Taken by Force, uh, you know, of course I listen to Fly the Rainbow a lot, but then I've been getting into this mid-period shit, now this did not match my shoes when it came out, I mean, we used to play Rock You Like a Hurricane, which isn't even on this album, that's on the next one, Love It First Thing, but, 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 we man, like what a, 82. What a great album, man. I put it sounds so fucking good, you know? Anyway, and what a great cover too. Yeah, like, that's you know? Awesome. But anyway, this is awesome too. They, they they really tried to capture the sound, you know? And there's lots of it, 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 they've very intentionally gone for like an early 80s sound, you know, lyrically and the references and the good times and the uh vibe the whole thing and um did you have a favorite song on this um don't tell me yet oh, yes we yeah. got the same one yeah yeah roots in my boots yeah. my favorite song on this album number two yeah it's really great yeah i, I don't know man like uh i was I, maybe i was just expecting um something else but uh but i was like really surprised and happy at what i heard you know like uh right at the bat i was like this is these are the like the these are the tracks that didn't make it on Hysteria, you know, like... <laughs> Def Leppard? Yeah, Def Leppard. But, like, it's in the same vein. Like, it made me think of the same thing. Like, anthemic. Um, it's about, like, we're gonna... We, we are, as a human race, are gonna make it together listening to rock music. <laughs> and we're gonna march proudly down the streets with our flags that say rock music. And everyone is going to be cheering us out of the windows. Like, that's what I think of when I listen to this record. Uh, okay, yeah, great. for instance, the, the, the ballad on this song is a love song to rock fans all over the world. Right, right. right. Rock believer. You know you what? Know? You can fuck to this record, too. <laughs> if I had a girlfriend. Uh -huh. okay. No, but it, exactly. It, it... Yeah, and also, what's a, the the... There's so much, okay, so like the first four or five songs are all gas in the tank, you know, it's awesome. It's like, uh, got all the gas in my Trans Am, right. bam, bam, thank you, man. Right, it <laughs> like, starts off like they just robbed a fucking convenience <laughs> store, and they're like, It's so 1983. Plus, like, okay, and song like Roots in My Boots, that's such a ESL rhyme, English second language rhyme, but, but, but there's such a charm to that, like... If English was your first language, you would never write something like, here I am, rock you like a hurricane. Yes. You know, yeah, like, there's that would never occur to me. You I know? love that, though. Yeah, there's a... And I, I say that quite often. I'll be like, here I am. Right. Rock you like a hurricane. I mean, what else are you going to say? It's fucking dope, you, you know, know? I thought the same thing when Turbo Negro was really starting to get big, like, just... I mean, those guys speak perfect English, but they have a way of crafting, well, Hank does, of crafting those lyrics where, uh, you know, the, the meaning is, uh, is an ESL meaning where, like, someone, mm. like, a native speaker wouldn't have come up with that terminology, but it fucking hits home and hits the mark, I think, more easily than uh, some, a, a native speaker would have written it. So I got to tell you something about that on Turbo Negro is that Tom wrote the lyrics and he grew up partly in Midland, Texas. Oh, wow! Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's not so... But anyway, uh, so he he spoke English better than the rest of those guys. Yeah. Um, but uh, they do a few things on this. I think it's uh, Shining, Shining in My Soul where they have that kind of... Um, 
hard rock reggae rhythm. Remember like in the early 80s after the police came out and every hard rock band had kind of like a weird hard rock reggae song that kind of dates it a little bit and it's like oh well, that's in bad taste now but no nah, these guys brought it back on here My, is that seventh sun or shining in my soul and it's got this cool like neoclassical theme like they do a lot of things where like i when you hear certain songs that are written in certain eras there you think like they don't i don't write songs people don't write songs like that anymore well, the, these guys did on this record yeah you know i agree uh -huh. and I also think that, like, I didn't realize, well, the last song is When You Know, but, uh, like, right around, I think, the eighth song, uh, When I Lay My Bones to Rest, I I, like, like, it's really setting you up for the end of the record for some reason, and I was like, Are, and without lo looking at the track listing before I listened to it, like, I, I was on a journey with this record, and then towards that, like, towards track eight, I was like, alright, they're wrapping it up. And then, like, there's two more fucking, you know, like, there's two more at the mm -hmm. end, like, Call the Wild and then the last song that are, like, great finishers. So it was a really good, yeah, a really good journey that they weed you through on this, uh, on this Good record. sequencing. Mm -hmm. I think Mickey D on drums has been a good influence on the band. And, though, I got I got to play a little ignorance. I hadn't heard the last couple of Scorpions albums, but I've been given a little warning by my some other friends of mine that... that that they they had got trying to rock again you mm -hmm. know yeah and this rocks like a hurricane baby. <laughs> but i don't know mickey d like like rock believer to me sounds like don't get mad but like a a, a song lemmy could have written you know I, I i also uh what you were saying about def leppard like i can see what you mean in the riffs but the lyrics are better here yeah. def leppard's no Def Leppard songs are actually about anything, yeah. you know? Yeah. Like a Def Leppard, they'd be like, skin on skin, <laughs> let the games begin. Yeah. Women, <laughs> lots of pretty women, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no yeah. verse links up, like no fucking Def Leppard verse like speaks to each it's, other. It's a series of imagery. It's like a... a... I got a note tonight. <laughs> Found it. Can't stop. The... What do you have to know tonight? Wait, focus on that verse first. I don't D even... Def Leppard songs are a lot like Duran Duran songs. Duran Duran's like, It means so much to me like a birthday or a pretty view. What the fuck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, no, the re Flex is a lonely child that's waiting in the park. Like, yeah, what, what the fuck? What the that's fu not anything. Do that's... you think Simon LeBon has like ADHD, or what do you think? The, I don't know. No, I think they had the they signed a deal with the devil to write fucking <laughs> songs that fucking people like. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't really have to be about anything. And yeah, they're apparently more successful than me. But let me get a sip of this. Uh, but Scorpions do it, and they've got the music and the riffs the and the lyrics great. to back it all up. It's yeah. a full package. Anyway, yeah, this is like pick it up. You know, total like dad rock album of the year. This and yes. fucking. It is a dad rock album. Get your here. fucking dad hard rock on with the Saxon oh and the God. Scorpions yes. album this year. Good thing we're not. This been a up. good year so far because like. Well, since I, I buy stuff for this show, that like I pretty much only listen to shit from 2022 right now. I mean, there's a lot more than this, but goddamn. I mean, I don't know. KLBJ should be rocking this shit, and they're not. There like, were some years where, I, like, that's probably, I mean, I, all I could have listened to, you know? Like, if I just had those two records. Yeah, me, Sean's I'm always telling playing. me, he's like, <laughs> he's like, I, I want to play drums in Dio, yeah. you know? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, like I'm ready for that, and I don't know, maybe maybe I am time for a dad rock band. But that, yeah. uh -huh. if I could be in a, anyone out there who wants to start a Dio Saxon Scorpions. Uh, You're gonna get a couple offers. Iron Maiden, I know who they band. are too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm All right. So uh, okay, the next thing we're talking about sounds a few. In a few ways, like my band Yard Work, but it's called Yard Act. 
Maybe we sound like them, but I'd like to open for Yard Act. I think this would be complimentary. So, um, you listened to this a few times, right, Sean? I did. I listened to Yard okay, Act. Okay, on three, what was your favorite thing about this CD? Uh, okay, you okay. got something in mind? Yeah, I do. I do. One, two, three. The it bass playing. Like idols. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. cool. <laughs> <laughs> But yes, to your point, the bass playing is really good. And uh -huh. I like the bass tone also. Yeah, it's really good. This is a fun album for me to sit and jam along to on bass. It's got funky, repetitive bass lines. Uh, if you like Idols, Sleaford Mods, uh, Viagra Boys, uh, this fits right in with all of it. These guys are from Leeds, the same city that brought you Gang of Four. And... Who the fuck else? So the Mekons and uh, it's where the Who recorded live at least. <laughs> yeah. Dang it, I should have fucking, I could have come up with that one. Soft Cell wow. from Leeds. Wow. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. So anyway, this album, I'm glad I got it. It's all good songs. This is a great album. It really flows. Mm -hmm. It's their first album. It debuted at number two on the British charts. And I've been like, they're going to play South by Southwest. They're going to be on with our old friends, uh, um, Surfboard. Surfboard. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, did you have a favorite song on here? Uh, no, I actually, uh, yeah, I didn't pick one out. Mine would be Quarantine the Sticks, but as a pre-warning, I always go for the song with the best bass line. But there's a lot of good bass playing on here. Um, let me see. The bass player is named Ryan Needham, formerly of a band called Menace Beach that I would check out because that sounds like a cool name. And uh, this band is, has a bunch of singles and they just came out uh, with this album. And uh, it's awesome. Uh, yeah, I mean, we've got like a Wire, Gang of Four, Post Punk, uh, the singer uh i don't know kind of reminds me of country teasers a little bit there's a lot of talking you know what another leads band some not so hip bands that this kind of reminds me of another leads band that you might love is uh chumbawamba wow. you know you know because yeah. it's so political mm -hmm. also um the band cake from the 90s, you know, how he would, like, talk through. He's yes, going yes. the distance. I mean, yeah, these yeah. guys are way more political than that. But, um, you know, it, it. when I first heard it, I was like, oh, man, this guy's going to talk through all the songs. But it's awesome. It's kind of like The Fall, you know? So if you like, it's kind of in there, but it's got the dance thing going on. And so that's why I brought up cake and chumbawamba but he's uh he's way wittier than those guys very well read Brit this is very british this is extremely british and uh i uh he talks know. a lot about parliament and <laughs> he talks a lot about like margaret thatcher no i'm kidding no, but it's uh yeah it's good he's a, he's a super witty singer uh he's very <clears throat> songs are well crafted um but when i first heard it i was like man you know like i'm really like yeah like it sounded a lot like reminding me of Wire, reminded me of Idols immediately. But like, um, the further I got into it, the more I liked it. Like, I think it's it starts off okay. It's not like Scorpions where it just fucking punches you right in the face, like and kicks you in the balls. But this one waits to kick you in the balls until about halfway through it. Um, but I really warmed up to this record, and I was fucking a huge fan by the time it was over. So yeah, it's good. I've listened to this multiple times. We had an extra week for this show, so uh, I've. I'm pretty well acquainted with this album. Um, let me see. Lots of good songs. Rich, uh, The Overload, Dead Horse, Tall Poppies. Um, there's no bad songs on this album. And uh, I, uh, I'd i recommend it to anybody. It's very danceable. It's hip. Uh, it's indie. It's, it's punkish. Uh, it's very British. Um, yeah, if you like The Fall or idols or um you know any of that stuff post-punk stuff i would definitely give this a listen so uh, it just so happens to be the only other compound word uh two syllable band that has the word yard as the first name <laughs> as yard work yard work uh, yeah. we're not even the so first great yard plug for your work. own band Toby. i would love to open for yard act if i could pick a bigger band that we should open for that we could do well 
playing with their for their crowd. Yeah. Well, you will because next year, once the person <laughs> that I asked to start a dad band with to cover Dio songs, we're gonna call ourselves Yardstick, yeah. and you're gonna be opening for us next year. You and the bill is gonna be Yardstick. Yard Act, and then Yard Work, and then Yardstick headlining. So everybody, get ready for the Yard Fest. Yard Fest. <laughs> Yeah, let's see. So, okay, and that brings us to... Oh, wait, I turned this cover inside out. God damn it. From the city that brought you Toby Marsh. Yes. <laughs> and, and, and Bushwick Bill and Enron. And, uh, <laughs> yep, and the Astrodome. And Ron Stone and Marvin Zindler. Right. Comes... Is, is Scarface from Houston? Scarface is from Houston. And Scarface comes from Malignant Altar. Malignant, okay, I don't, this, you, this, look at this cover. Okay, so like there's these like fish-headed guys in a hellscape kind of uh, looking up at this altar. I, I guess, look at them. They're like praising something. Anyway. Do they look cancerous? That's some great pencil drawing there. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> does, the, does the altar have tumors on And of course, you wouldn't be able to read that. And this is a good thing. You see CDs. Oh, I can't even get it in focus there. But CDs. they'll have to print it, you know, right. But anyway, these guys are heavy as shit. This is a Houston five piece. God damn. Um, there's a great... I'm going to start putting links in the comments. Uh, on the videos and uh, there's a really good set from last month of these guys playing in Brooklyn at St. Vitus Bar and uh, I'm gonna put a link to that because it was really well recorded and uh, so <clears throat> old school death metal uh, malignant altar from Houston there's a lot of crushing lumbering riffs there's a lot of sick rolling drums through the whole thing um it's not not like a catchy chorus record it's 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 got six long songs and uh, i've been listening to it a lot it's super heavy i'd want to see these guys with cannibal corpse you know uh look at that pencil drawing that's awesome now look okay these guys might have taken a look look how easy to read scorpions rock scorpions know how old and blind their fans are but well, Malignant Halter. I know it's a different look. Yeah. I can bear look at the lyrics to this though. You can't be that is ridiculous. Okay, Malignant Halter, <laughs> I'm just gonna say that that's a little fucking ridiculous. Come on, dude. Come on. Half your fan base is over 40. Like <laughs> death metal dudes are old and gals are like getting up there these days. Toby, will you talk about how uh, age is celebrated in death metal? Well, it's cool to be an old guy in, in death metal yeah. and metal in general. But yeah, death metal, I mean, I, I, you got to play for a while, it seems like, to be able to be good. These guys are heavy as shit, you know? And like, they've got all, they look like a bunch of seasoned veterans. And then when we went through their names, you recognize the drummer from uh, Do Dauber Beverly. He was in... Uh, uh, insect Warfare. Insect yeah. Warfare, which... You know, Sean's been telling me about some sick ass drumming in that band, and uh, I think we had a text conversation. We were talking about blast beats, and you said you were working on yours, and I was like, "You gotta fucking see this guy." And yeah, this dude, Dauber Beverly, is fucking insane. He's a great drummer. If you'll notice when he plays, he doesn't move anything but his wrists because, like, if he expends any more energy, he's not gonna make it through the set. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's yeah. Jesus Christ, man. What a fucking accomplished drummer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wilson Prevett on uh, vocals. Uh, Bo Beasley and uh, Josh Bokemeyer on guitar. Uh, Matt Alleman on bass. Um, I, I also saw some good footage of these guys playing in Houston at maybe Sound Exchange or something. And it looked right up my alley. I've not seen these guys. I'd love to see them at some point. Uh, I had some favorite songs on here. There's six songs on here. They're 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 fairly long. Look at that cool print. 
Anyway, I, I, I like it aesthetically. Man, this could be on a rudimentary peni, right? Or Yeah, I need to get that LP just because of that artwork. It's fucking really cool. Yeah, right? Did they release it, release it on vinyl? Yeah. 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 This but is I, their second album. The first one, okay, Re Realms of Exquisite Morbidity. The first album is called Retribution of Jealous Gods. Uh, I don't have that. My favorite song is song number two. Usurping the Pantheon Crown. Uh, I also like Ceremonial Decapitator. And the final song is called Rite of Krasu. I had to look that up. Krasu is Southeast Asian folklore. Uh, it's a, a witch that's ahead of a beautiful young woman that floats with the organs hanging out at night, going around uh, the craves raw flesh and blood. And then during the day goes back to Fuck her own. Yeah, it, dude. It's kind of sick. I want to fucking hear about that. <laughs> That's awesome. Dude, this is a great record cuz uh I mean, it is it's just all. I've said this a lot in our in our videos, but I mean, I I really feel like this one more than any other uh it's just consistent and there's blast beats and then there's also like fucking badass breakdowns that don't get old and it's not shit you've heard a million times it's just like great great quality quality death metal yeah yeah the yeah. songs are long and have a lot of parts and uh but without being progressive it's it's lumbering is the word that comes to mind when i hear these riffs they're just <laughs> heavy and crushing you know and uh yeah, I can't say enough nice things about Malignant Alter. It's inspirational. Like, <laughs> you know, like, how did it get to that? I'm inspired by death metal. It's an inspirational record. Like, it's fantastic. It, it's great. I'm so happy they're from Houston, too, because that means they're probably going to play here soon. So. Yeah, yeah. Or we, we may have to take I think to we've talked about in our eight episodes more Houston bands than Austin bands, but... Um, yeah. like to talk about more austin bands uh yeah i i get some stuff out now we've already got what we're going to talk about next week and i'll give you a little spoiler here a little taste of what's to come <laughs> oh shit there's a book that goes with this i'm reading it so go read the dolly parton book and you can feel like you're in a book club with me for our next episode and we'll talk about the book <laughs> And that's and her first, album. Uh, this is her first death metal album. So yeah. it's, it's really, it's a good first So we've effort. got Crowbar, <laughs> Corpse Grinder, and Dolly Parton on the next episode. We and don't just do death fucking metal. I, I'm currently listening to Dolly's book on, uh, on Audible. that service, yeah, that I wasn't going to plug. <laughs> 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 anyway, um, it's, you can uh, also listen to it on Libby. Maybe oh, one day it'll be free. Yeah, on you Libby. can check it out at the library, but you'll probably be waiting a long time because it came out like three days ago. So, <laughs> so in three years, oh, you can to it for yeah, free. your library copy will be ready. But I wanted to be able to talk about it with y'all, so I went ahead and bought it. And I love listening to books, and I would do a whole. Okay, but I gotta say, I i mean, we'll get into this next week. I mostly listen to, like, science fiction and mystery and some biography and a few. But this is more a uh, general fiction kind of thing. But anyway, we'll get into that next week. Dolly's book is something to look forward to. I want to thank all my friends who've come up to me and told me that they like the show and they want us to do more of it and all of it. So it's awesome. I really appreciate it. And uh, we're going to go out with the song, and we will see y'all shortly with uh, the... Uh, what we just talked about. Ugh. Let's see. Is that plug good? Dead rock! <laughs> Did I get my pick? I'm not uh, playing this shit without on it. a pick again. Yeah. This is the part that I, um, everyone's just waiting to see how quickly we can yeah, we get so, set up. So there's a third part this. of this song that we never play because, you know, we're doing the theme song version. We're going to... We'll do that next week. The, the we third promise. part's really great, too. Yeah. We should learn a Scorpion song. We're going to...